Here we go. Episode number 38 of the Hardline Sports Talk. I am Michael Merlo. John Michael Masiri is with me. JM, how are you doing? I'm happy. I'm excited. I'm nervous. I'm... But any emotion you got, I am it. What a weekend. I mean... Yeah, tell me about it. What a weekend for all teams in New York that played, including the Mets... Had a nice day either today, mon- Sunday or Monday. So um, let's give a round of applause for New York. We're yeah, back. Yeah, New York is back. Great whether job. It's new, whether it's New York football, New York baseball, the Yankees are in the playoffs. Let's go. We're back. I don't want to hear any of this crap about New York sports being dead. Okay. Mm. Yeah, we're fully alive. Uh, take we're it easy. Get to, yeah, to, we're pump the get, brakes a little bit. We're gonna get to the New York Jets and New York Giants in a little bit. We are going to start off with baseball, though, as the New York Yankees on Sunday clinch a playoff berth with a 1-0 victory over the Tampa Bay Rays. They are headed to Boston to play at Fenway against the Red Sox in the wild card game. Garrett Cole versus Nathan Avaldi, big-time matchup. Two guys that I just read a stat. This is Cole's, like, fifth start in a winner-take-home yeah. game. Nathan avaldi has been a big game pitcher for a while now, so... I'm going to leave it to you because I'm sure you have every emotion. You're excited. You're incredibly nervous because me personally, I'm, I'm so excited to watch this. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Like you said, with Cole, not only has he pitched in big games before, but he's faced the Red Sox a lot this year. So will that play in his favor? Will that play against him? We'll see. Um, But yeah. I'm um, very, like you said, very excited and very nervous. Um, as we know, my, the Yankee season can end tomorrow or today as everyone's listening to this. So, yeah, um, it, it, it should be. I mean, it's Yankees, Red Sox, wild card. I mean, uh, that, that if that doesn't get you fired up, I don't know what will. That's that's just the greatest rivalry in sports in a one game playoff is is going to be primetime television. And as we've said, I'm sure the MLB is looking their chops right now for the TV ratings. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but uh, oh, crazy, must be. crazy weekend. It looked like we were going to have a four-way tie at one point. It, it, it just – it got crazy. It, it's it's sad that the Yankees lost the home field advantage, but what are you going to do? You know, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, I think it's important to have home field advantage, but at the end of the day, the best team's going to win. You know what's crazy is that – not even the all right, take the four way tie out of it, but you had a chance for a three way tie. The Yankees, at one point, if they would have lost, had a chance. If the Yankees would have lost, they would have played the Rays in a game, uh, not the Rays, excuse me, the Blue Jays in a game yeah. for the second wild card spot. So, yeah, pulling up Garrett Cole's numbers right now against um, the Red Sox. I don't know why it would bring me to his offensive numbers but whatever anyway let me find that for you in a minute but i do want to see he hasn't been that good against the red sox this season no i want to look at his career numbers though garrett cole yes no he, he hasn't been great no i think it's gonna be a high scoring game i think it's gonna be a very exciting game i'm looking forward to it uh let's just talk about the weekend quickly because it didn't really go that well the yankees lose game one on friday and game two they get blown out brandon Lau beat you um, Jordan Montgomery, how are we feeling about him? I, I I still have confidence in Jordan Montgomery. One bad start doesn't write the whole script. And I thought Aaron Boone on Sunday managed that game incredibly well, to be honest with you. He was making a ton of moves. He went to – he started the game with Tyone, and Tyone gave you four good innings. You went to Wendy Peralta. You went to Clay Holmes. You went to Chad Green. You went to Jonathan Loisica, and Loisica was in a jam. He gets out of the jam. And then he goes to Chapman in the ninth. I thought he managed the game pretty well, very well, actually, almost like a playoff game. It was a playoff game. You needed yeah. that game. You did not want to, you know, play in any sort of game 163 or 164. You know, it could have been a 164. Yeah. If <laughs> there was a, some crazy tie. But if they would have lost, they were playing the Jays in game 163. So you wanted to avoid that so you can get Garrett Cole in this game against Boston. And listen, the Red Sox took care of what they had to do, but this has been a weird season for Boston. It's been a weird season for the Yankees, obviously, but Boston had that incredible first half. They come out of the break. They come out of the break. They lose the lead to Tampa. They 
they had that issue. They had the COVID issue and they've yep. been dealing with that. You know, that's almost a month ago now. So it's been a weird season, but they're here. And again, I think the Yankees are better, but it'll be an interesting game. Yeah, it will be an interesting game. And what a season. I mean, it, it, it's been a weird season for just about everybody. Um, very, emo, you know, roller coaster. Like we said, uh, if this was a roller coaster, it would be the greatest roller coaster in the world when you're talking about the Yankees season. Um, right. And it kind of feels like, why do we even evaluate the team seasons? Why do we even talk? We should just, everybody should go into hibernation. And then once I don't know, September 1st hits, we should start saying, all right, how's this season going to shake up, shake up? Because as we saw, I mean, the Cardinals with their crazy run, the, the AL wild cards mixing up a bunch, just, all these, uh, the, the, the NL East, obviously, the Mets being in first place forever and then uh, finishing eight games under 500. Um, Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Um, just, it, it's like, why do we even, why do we even talk about it? But we talk about it for fun. We talk about it because um, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know the Cardinals are going to win 17 games in a row. And that's what makes baseball and that's what makes sports fun. But, um, yeah, uh, this postseason is one of the most interesting that I can remember, especially, I think, when you look at the NL. I think the NL is going to be really exciting to watch. And um, it all starts with these wild card games. And, you know, the Yankees and the Red Sox have faced off a bunch of years. They always do. It's been pretty even. Times. I believe the Red Sox have it 10 to 8 on the series on the season. 10 series. to 9. 10 to 9. Um. And these teams have kind of had reverse seasons. The Red Sox, like you said, going on their their first half, they were one of the best teams in baseball. And then the second half, not so great. And the Yankees were 41 and 41 through their first 82 games. And they finished out the season 51 and 29 since then. So it, it really is the opposite for the Yankees. Uh, way better second half than the first half. So We'll see. Uh, like I said, the the best team's gonna win on Tuesday, and um, yeah, that, that that that's really it. I mean, it all came down to with this division. You look at the record against the Orioles. That's basically what it came down to, and that's why the Yankees and the Red Sox fell short of the Rays. Took care of the business. They had to take care of, mm -hmm. and the thing with this series between the Yankees. and 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 the Red Sox all season long, like like we said, the Red Sox had it by a game. And that ended up meaning a ton, but it was completely, you know, it was completely one sided in the first half of the year where the Red Sox were dominating the Yankees. And now in the second half of the season, really in the past couple of two months here, the Yankees dominated the Red Sox and they dominated most recently at Fenway Park. And if there was a four way tie, the Yankees had their choice of who they would play. Mm -hmm. So it was like team A, B, C, and D. The Yankees yep. were team C, the Red Sox were team A, and the Blue Jays were team B. The Yankees had their choice at Team C who they would play in a, you know, game 163, what game 164 if there was a four-way tie. And the Yankees chose to go to Fenway instead of going to play in Toronto. So that just shows you the Yankees feel good about this matchup. The Yankees feel good about playing against the Red Sox in Fenway Park. And I, I think they're going to win. I, I think, again, I think, I think it's going to be a really exciting game. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. I think he's going to come out on top. And one more other thing I had to say, Aaron Judge, you know, has been obviously a very clutch player for the Yankees. I can't believe that was his first walk-off on, on Sunday. Are you sure that was his first walk-off? Because I think That's what I saw. I think that was his second, because I know going into this year, he didn't have one, and I'm pretty sure he had one earlier in the year. So that was his second. But, Check that. I saw it on Twitter. But, yeah, that was a stupid narrative that came out that Judge hadn't had his first walk-off yet where – People were thinking he wasn't a clutch player because he hadn't had a walk-off hit. And, I mean, the amount of time – if I had a nickel for every time Aaron Judge had a clutch hit as a Yankee, you know, I'd, I'd have – I'd definitely have a couple dollars on me. So – Yeah, I forgot. Only clutch – clutch hits can only come in the ninth inning. Yeah, you can only hit – well, yeah, walk-offs. <laughs> yeah, now that guy gets a ton of big hits for that team. And even if it was a second walk-off, I – that is pretty crazy. In yeah. His, you know – what is this, his fourth year now? Uh -huh. So that would and, be uh... – And, you know, what, what? just what an insane season with – I think it, it all comes down to the way the AL shaped up. Obviously, it came down to the wire. Like we said, we almost had a four-way tie. And, you know, it, it's – if you're a Mariners or if you're a Blue Jays fan, it's obviously a tough pill to swallow. 
that you didn't make it to the playoffs, but both those teams just what an outstanding season, especially I don't even know who to say, especially because the Mariners, I would lean more towards the Mariners because nobody we had the Mariners as one of the worst teams in baseball coming in right to um the season. And I and I'm sure if we go back to our first ever episode when we did the the baseball preview show, I, I think me and you were like laughing about the Mariners. Like that's how bad we thought they were gonna be. Um and hats off to them. I mean, a 90 win season is unbelievable. Um, that team has a lot of young talent on it. And I think they have, I think they have a pretty bright future. And then you want to talk about a bright future. Let's go to the other team that finished short, the Toronto blue Jays. You know, you have Vlad Guerrero and Bo Bichette alone. Don't even talk about the other guys. Those are two guys that are going to be just fantastic pieces in your lineup for years. I mean, you better lock them up quick. And then, obviously, George Springer, even though he was hurt, came up big in a lot of moments. Teoscar Hernandez had a fantastic season. Obviously, you know how good Semyon was. Um, even other guys like Lord Scurriel. And then you want to move over to the pitching. You know, coming into the season, we knew the Blue Jays had a pitching problem. And we thought it would all start. And uh, it, it starts with Hyunjin Ryu. And it ends with Hyunjin Ryu because who there, who, who's really after Hyunjin Ryu? And... Boy, did Robbie Ray step up in a big way. I mean, he he might win the AL Cy Young. Obviously, Alex Manoa just won the AL Pitcher of, uh, of the Month, or AL Rookie of the Month, sorry. Um, and Jose Barrios pitched well for them if, as a trade deadline acquisition. So, yeah, they, they got some things to tune with the bullpen and uh, maybe add one more bat in that lineup or something, but um or or a back you know back of the rotation starter even steven matz had a solid year for for the blue jays but yeah pain um yeah hats off, re- to, the, hats off to the blue really jays good for them yeah they they might the blue jays i don't know i'd have to look it up they might have set a record for like w- one of the largest win different uh run differentials to not make the postseason i mean their run differential was up ar- around 180 or something crazy like that it was 183. <clears throat> yeah. Their I mean, expected win total was 99 and 63. That would have came one game short of the AL East. So that, also, that is when was the last time we had a division, speaking of the AL East, that had four teams win 90 plus games? I, I saw the status the first time. It might. It might be the first time ever or the, or the first time in a very, very long time, yeah. but, but it, it's historic what happened in the in that division. Imagine being the Orioles. 52 games, yeah, 52 wins. Yeah, that sucks. Their, um, their expected run uh, – their run differential was minus negative 297. Oh, my God. Yeah, their expected win total, though, was 54 wins instead of 52. Oh, so they got, they got shafted. Yeah, they got shafted out two wins. Uh, I had the Mariners at 68-94 this year. Yeah, there you go. My worst prediction of the year. You ready for this? Mm-hmm. I had the Tigers at 55 wins. Yeah, but see, you can't beat up on yourself for that because I don't think anybody had the Tigers. Winning 77 games. Yeah. Yeah, How about it was the a very... Arizona Diamondbacks finishing 55 games back in first place? No shot. Yeah. Holy crap. That's great. I you know, we're gonna talk about that in a second. The uh the NOS. But um I I'm I'm impressed by the Mariners. Good for them. Mm-hmm. And uh yeah, they got a lot of young players. Kyle see them crying about Kyle Seeger. <laughs> you know, Isn't he retiring. God. It's like he's dead or something. Oh wait, wait, is he retiring or is he just going to leave in free agency? He's What's just going to leave because okay. they don't want to pick up the op. Remember in the beginning of it. Remember that uh, whatever that executive for them came. Oh out yeah, talking about how cheap the parking was. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. apparently, like it was just known in the organization that they were not picking up his option. He was going to be a free agent, and I guess they even fired that guy. And it's still true; they're not picking up his option. Right. So they were all very upset about that. And not I mean, he's been with them forever, Kyle Seeger. No, I, I was I was joking, but they were all they, like everybody was crying. I'm like, all right, calm down. You would think like David Wright's leaving the field or something. So um <sighs> that's disrespectful of Kyle Seeger. Here we go. 
So, yeah, we're definitely going to have a – I'm going to guess you're going to post an instant reaction video, win or lose tomorrow on TikTok or something. Oof. I'd say if we win, that, that post will be up a little quicker than if we lose. Uh, if they lose, I'll post it. If you if they win, you you post it. Oh, you mean like you're just going to take a video of me? If No, like I'll say – I'd like something up the second oh, you just you know, the game's yeah, over. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's the Yankees. I mean, I'd rather it be you, but if you, know, you can't do it. Right. I mean, listen, obviously as, as a fan, you want your team to succeed and you want your team to win a championship. And obviously if you're in the playoffs, you have a chance of winning that championship. So will – do I obviously want my team to win and will it crush me if they lose? Yes. Will this crush me as much as some of the other losses that I've experienced in the past five years? No, I don't think any, and I really hope I don't bite my words here. I don't think any loss can equal the pain that I felt in 2019 when they lost to the Astros in that game six after LeMahieu hit that walk, hit that game tie home run the high of that to the low of seeing Jose Altuve who I despise and even before I found out that they were cheating despised um you know seeing that happen was crushing and and every time I look at highlights from that season I'm like how do we not win the world series this year like you look at that team and it was it was if it just felt like it was meant to be I mean even right. labor told everybody had a career year that year labor Brett Gardner even hit freaking 20. Brett Gardner hit 28 home runs. How do you know when the World Series Brett Gardner hits 28 home runs? Brett Gardner's the boy. Yeah. So Brett Gardner nah, but, yelling at Glaber Torres. That was good, good for Brett. Right. But um, yeah, obviously I'm gonna be very upset if they if they lose, but um it won't burn as much. Your expectations for this team, it's simple. You, the, your expectations for this team are not as high as they exactly. were in 2017 when they were in the playoffs or 2019 before the playoffs. Exactly. Because of who – it's simple because of who you have to play if you win. Yeah. You know, I like your chances against – yeah, I, I think if they somehow won this wild card game and beat the Rays in a five-game series, I actually like your chances against the Astros. And I think that would be a very entertaining se- series mm-hmm. just because of, you know, the hatred. And I you know, the Yankees played pretty well against the Astros this year. I just don't think you beat the Rays. Right. So, yeah, one at a time. Obviously, you got to beat the Red Sox to get to the Rays, but we'll see what happens. It's baseball. Anything, it, that's baseball, Susan. Anything happens. That's baseball, Susan. Mm-hmm. Oh, I could have a two-hour rant about John Sterling. <laughs> All right. Let's move it over to the NL side really quickly before we get to our New York football teams. But on Wednesday, Wednesday night, the Dodgers and the Cardinals will face off in L.A., for the NL wild card game, the Dodgers, who won 106 games, yes, 106 games, are playing in this wild card game against the St. Louis Cardinals, who, like we had said before, went on a 17 game winning streak. They are 90 and 72. They will be traveling. It's out to LA. It's Adam Wainwright versus Max Scherzer. I'm pumped for that game too. Mm-hmm. That's going to be a damn good game, and that's. That's where if you're the St. Louis Cardinals, you're thankful for the wild card game. You're thankful that's only a one game playoff and you don't have to play this Dodgers team in a best <laughs> of three or a best of five because your chances only get worse the more games you have to play against this team. Yeah. If you win, you just got to go play the Giants. All good though. <laughs> but again, you're only worried about one game. And yeah, this is uh this feels like a trap game to a lot of people. You know, it would be exciting to see the Cardinals upset them. I usually do root for the Cardinals, and I don't like the Dodgers, but I'm rooting for the Dodgers here just because I like to see the Giants. I'd like to see the Dodgers in right. a five-game series. That is, That would be something. We've seen them play all year. The, the Giants won the series 10-9. to nine. It's been neck and neck. So it's they, they trade punches. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. I want to see the Dodgers win this game. I usually am one to root for the uh, the underdog, but like you said, I would really love to see this Dodgers and Giants series. Um, and I think the Dodgers are going to win. Um, I, I think the Cardinals are obviously playing some of the best baseball they've played all year and some of the best baseball out of any of the teams in the MLB currently. I mean, they just won 17 in a row, obviously. But, um, you know, Max Scherzer has, has looked untouchable lately and that Dodgers team even without Max Muncy just is so freaking talented 
Um, so, yes, while it is a one-game playoff and, and the chances of the Cardinals winning do go up because of that, I'm still, with the home field advantage and with the guy on the mound, um, I'm still going to go with the Dodgers. The guy on the mound is the biggest thing because if it was – I would say that the, the Cardinals are going to come here and upset them if it wasn't for Max Scherzer pitching in that game. Right. So it's, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of laughable the amount of talent that this Dodgers team has. I mean, it's just insane. The, it's the laughable first, they didn't win a division. The first thing I know, the first thing everybody wants to think about when you think of the Dodgers, you know, you think about Walker Bueller, you think about Mookie Betts, you think about Max Muncie. Now, obviously you think about Turner and Scherzer and, and you know, there's Kershaw still there and all these guys, even we'd like to think about Bellinger, but oh boy, is that guy falling off the face of the earth this year. Um, but how about like some of these guys, like Julio Urias? I mean, I know we don't care that much about wins, but the guy just won 20 games. I mean, that's saying something. He obviously had a good freaking season. He won 20 games. Yeah. He had a low three already. Yeah. He was, he was yeah. legit. And some just the amount of talent spread the depth on his team, Will Smith, um, Chris Taylor, AJ Pollock, like, these are not guys that are batting, you know, in the heart of your order, but they're, they would be on some other MLB clubs. You know, what's crazy. I'm going to just come out and say it. You could disagree with me if you want. And it could get proven wrong in a couple of years. The Scherzer Turner trade was the best tra trade deadline trade ever. I the amount of talent that the Dodgers got in that trade, they got an ace, a top three pitcher in baseball from what it looks like for this season. And then Trey, uh, Trey Turner, who is unbelievable. We were talking about it before, possibly even getting his name into the MVP race. I mean, he's just an ultra talented player. He's going to be their future shortstop, not only for this season, next season, and then they're going to extend him because they're not bringing Seager back. I mean, it's just an unbelievable trade. The amount of talent in that trade, was was crazy so i'm gonna say that and i'm gonna say the dodgers beat the giants and the cardinals yeah you know um i i don't think that's a crazy statement i mean obviously like you said the talent they got back and the way those guys have performed i mean if you took the trade deadline if the season started right after the trade deadline max scherzer is the cy young and trey turner might be the mvp you know like so yeah you're right but um I, I can't I can't say that yet just because of the talent that the Dodgers gave up. I mean, Kybert Ruiz is one of the best prospects in baseball. I believe they also gave them Josiah Gray, like some really top-notch prospects. So let's see how their careers turn out. Um, but yeah, what a haul this team got. And just the, the, the rotation is just ridiculous. And they don't even have Trevor Bauer, who was supposed to play a, a, a big role for this team. And obviously we know what happened to him. That sleaze ball. Um, but Yuri is Kershaw, Bueller, Scherzer. I mean, that is a lockdown. And Kershaw's injured, which is unfortunate, but that is just unbelievably talented. Scary, scary good. Hey, what if I told you Max Scherzer, Trey Turner, Juan Soto, and Bryce Harper would all be on the same team? What do you mean? Get the, you don't understand the joke, do you? Ah, ha-ha. Ah. They were all started in uh, – in, was Harper – did Harper and Soto ever play together in Washington? Uh, yes, it was Soto's first year. They did. 20 – what? Well, that was 2018? 18, the year before they won the World Series. Right, right. It's crazy, that core. I mean, you know, we joke about it, but three out of the four of that core won the World Series. And it's bizarre that they, like – they're all separated now, but they got a World Series. You know, like the Nationals, that's the crazy story about the Nationals. They had that window right there, and they hit it. They hit that Well, window. they had that window for a while, though, they, and the funny thing is they won the World Series, and I actually like them going into that postseason, but if you would have told me, like, which year, you know, you thought yeah, they would win the World Series, like it was definitely not 2019 or something like that. And exactly. I remember that I remember that the Nationals were always that hot pick to go to the to go to the World Series for years. Yeah, and they just kept losing in the NLDS and the NLCS just over and over again. Um, so yeah, you're right. But 
it's just crazy to think that they had a window where Soto was there, Harper was there, Turner and Scherzer were there for that one year, and they they hit it. Or I'm sorry, no, they didn't. Her, Harper was gone. What am I talking about? They hit it the ne- they hit it the next year. They hit it, it the next year, Harper. right? And who would have thought that Bryce Harper w- was this? You know, obviously this hyped up prospect and uh, obviously a talented player. I mean, he might win his second MVP. And to think that the Nationals are gonna are getting a guy right now who's Probably better than him. Probably will yeah. be better than him. I mean, he's he might win the MVP over him, and he's 22 years old. So they better uh, they better give that guy a blank check and say, write however many years and however much money you want. And blank there checks. You go. Mm-hmm. Blank checks only. And that 2018 year, they only they went 82 and 80. Brutal year. That was um, uh, Dusty's last year. Yes. That was Dusty's last year, right? And look at Dusty now, man. Yeah. You know, say what you want him. about the say what you want about the Astros. He was brought there for damage control late in that, you know, it was that report came out when February and they had to yeah. fire Hinch. So they brought him in late. He came in there in 2020. They were a game away from the World Series. Call what you want, the 2020 season. And now again, they're the second seed of the AL. They've been a great team. And the best part about this all, he doesn't have a contract for next year. It's unbelievable what this guy has done. So, so yeah, right. credit to him. I mean, he's dealt with a lot. You know, he was obviously wasn't part of that team that cheated, or even the you know the year before in 2019, and he stepped up big for them. He's he's been a absolute lifesaver for that franchise. Yeah, and the talk. I you know I was looking at his resume. And he's he's managed uh, five different teams, and he's won a division now for every single team that he's coached for. That's he's managed. So, I mean, the guy's record and his resume is just off the charts as a manager. And he shouldn't have been fired from Washington. That was a that was a bad decision by them. He should have been granted one more year. You know, know, ended up working out. But right. Speaking of not having a contract for next year, being a manager. There's a new uh, help wanted sign at the city field clubhouse for a manager. Yeah. So uh, why doesn't, uh, why doesn't Steve Cohen and Sandy get on the line? Hey, Dusty, why don't you come on over? I would love the that. Big Apple. I would love that. Yeah. That's a great transition right yeah. there too. I mean, in all likelihood, I would imagine that Dusty goes back to Houston. Um, I'd be surprised if not. I mean, it, it depends on how they finish out this year, but just getting them to, I think, 95 wins and winning the AL West is, I think, enough. Obviously. I mean, the only way he's not back, right, is if he doesn't want to be back, whether it's right. he retires or he literally just wants to leave. Right. Well, he's been I in the know. game for a while, so the retirement isn't out of the question, you know. I'm sure they – that's what I think is going to happen. I'm sure they went to him and said, you want another year here? I mean, there's right. no way. I think so, the Mets – I mean, I think it depends on what happens with the GM, if they get the GM first, what what GM they get. But I think the Mets are going to lean more in the um, – that, like, drill sar- – no, I don't want to say drill sergeant, but uh, – Older veteran. That's older veteran sport. experience type guy versus, you know, a, a, a puppet or an analytical guy or something like that. This is um, what's going to happen. And I got nervous about it, but I'm, I'm good now. I thought Sandy Alderson was going to make a hire before the president of baseball operations was hired. That's not going to happen. So they're going to hire a president of baseball operations, hopefully soon. I, I mean, I'm hoping that gets done in the next two weeks, whether it's Theo, whether it's Billy Bean, whether, you know, whoever, bring in a good qualified candidate and get some stability in this franchise. And then he's going to hire a GM and then they're going to hire a manager. You're not going to see a manager hired for this team probably until the end of October, early November. But I'm I'm with you there. I think they're going to go after a um, experienced guy. That's what I want. You know, right. I, I don't unless it was Beltron, but like still, because I think Beltron's going to be a very good manager somewhere. Um, yeah, my my official prediction for this Mets uh, GM vacancy, I think it's going to be Theo Epstein. Um, really? I, I, I yeah, I really just see that happening. And um, I don't know how quick it will happen. Obviously, I'm not – I don't know what the negotiations are like, but uh, 
if it does happen before they get the manager, I think Theo's will make a smart choice. And well, it is. See, they've said they want the president to hire them. right. So listen, uh, I see that working out. I see, I see the Mets, but doesn't Theo make already a pretty good amount of money being a consultant for the MLB? Yeah. Uh, listen, Steve Cohen's going to have to not only give him a high salary, but most likely ownership stake, whether, you know, five, 3%, 5%, right? even if it was Bean. And, and listen, if it's Theo, I'll jump for joy. If it's Billy Bean, I'll jump for joy. Mm-hmm. I'll be incredibly happy with, with both hires, just because again, it's stability, it's respect. It's, you know, smart people running your organization, guys, you trust, right. You know, I, I agree with you that Theo has been, you know, I think overrated for, you know, not overrated, but people look at his name and you're like, Oh my God, he's the greatest of all time. Right. I don't know if he's the greatest of all time. He's done some incredible things in this game. He's a very smart guy when he is an executive. I think he's a top five executive in all mm-hmm. of baseball, but He's not the greatest, no. he, at least yet. If he wants to be the greatest and he wants to try it in New York, please but be my guest. But he's a he's a pretty good uh, pretty good guy to hand the keys over. Hundred percent. So I'm getting excited talking about it. <laughs> but we're we're far, we're far off. Big off season gonna, for the Mets. I mean, obviously, this is, it this sucks is the biggest off season in franchise history. Yeah, I mean, I can't I can't uh, argue with you there. I don't think that's a crazy statement to make. I mean, this is their – when did Cohen take full control of the team? Uh, like August, October, November of last year. Yeah, so, you know, this is – Steve Cohen's finally – he's had his first season. He's into the swing of things now, um, and he's going to hire his GM. They're going to be looking for a new manager. And then obviously from a personnel standpoint, they're going to be looking for a lot of new players. So I agree. I think this is a massive off season. Yeah. What's up? 13 is a, there's 26 guys in the roster at the minimum. 13 guys will be at, will be gone. Holy crap. That's a lot. Yeah, it's going to be. It's gonna a lot of guys are gonna be going. So who's who's locked in? Pete's locked in, Degrom, Lindor. Uh, the, those are the obvious ones. But what about like some of the lo- lower level guys? Who else would you say is safe? Nimo's? Nimo's locked in. McCann. McCann, Nito, just because they have to be. Yeah. Uh, Diaz. I'd say Diaz is pretty locked in. Right. I'd say Lugo is locked in. I don't who, trust uh, him, but Lugo. J.D. Davis isn't locked in. J.D. Dom Davis Smith is isn't gone, locked in. Gone. Jeff McNeil's not locked in. I think McNeil's locked in. I okay. think uh, I shouldn't say locked in. My prediction would be that he'd be back. Right. Conforto's not gone. as a starter. I think Conforto's yeah. gone. Although so we've seen before that just because a player is on the field crying for the Mets, it doesn't mean he's necessarily going to leave. Listen. The only thing Conforto, that pissed me off, and I'm being serious here. The only thing Michael Conforto should be crying about is the fact that he costed himself $100 million. That's it. Get off the field. Stop crying. Thank you for what you did. You were a streaky player. You had numbers. Great. Get out. You could. In my opinion, he is the number one reason on offense why this team struggled so badly. He is the guy they needed the most. Because he connects the lineup. You have the top three and you have the bottom half of it. And he's the guy that bats fourth, third or fourth. He connects the top to the bottom. He was a massive part of this offense. And him not being himself was, I can't even tell you how bad it was. I always, I said it, a lot of Met fans said it too. The Mets were never going to get the offense going if he never got it going. And he never did. You know, I think I remember us saying, or one of us saying, that Conforto was going to be like, why am I so freaking choppy? I don't hear you're not choppy like sound wise, but like your my visual is just getting choppy. All right, we're good now. Um, I believe one of us said earlier on the season, you know, Conforto is the X factor for this team yeah. in the lineup. He is if he's doing well, the team's going to do well. If he's not, the team's not going to be. And I think that proved right. I mean, you look at the numbers that he put out this season, and it's not all on him, but he certainly played a big part in it. And, you know, that's something that the Mets lineup was lacking and and lacked this whole year was lefty pop, and that's where they fell short. I mean, there's obviously 
the depth of the lineup and guys didn't have great years like Lindor and James McCann was horrible and McNeil didn't play well, but um, you know, Michael Conforto being super streaky, like he always is um, did not help. And even when he was having his highs of the season, his hot streaks, he they they certainly did not last for long enough. Yeah, no, they weren't long. He wasn't great. People talk about his great second half. He had a pretty good month of August uh, yeah, because that was when, you know, the hype was there. He had mm-hmm. an under 800 OPS for the second half of the season. So I don't even want to hear the moral victory of, well, he turned it around. No, he, he didn't really turn it around. Mm-hmm. So that's enough Michael Conforto talk. Yeah, go please cry on the field. <laughs> enough of you. Gone. This team is going to go under some massive, massive, massive changes, and it is needed, and I'm happy. You know, let one last thing before we get to football. This team, I wanted to, you know, obviously I love the Mets. I'm a diehard Mets fan. And I wanted this team to succeed because I thought they had a core. I really liked these guys. You know, they were obviously close, and I, I thought that meant something. I've never went 180 on a team so bad. I hate them. Like, yeah. I, I'm so serious. Like, these guys, like – Oh, but we love it here. Oh, but the culture's great. I could give a crap if you love it here. I could give a crap if the culture's great. It clearly it clearly wasn't good enough. Mm-hmm. So can, can, can you leave? Can you get out? I love Jonathan VR, Michael Conford, and all these guys. Oh, I love playing in New York. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Go play for the Yankees if you have playing in New York, please. <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, that's okay. Enough. No, no, that's okay. Enough um, of you. <laughs> yeah, I mean I'm usually not a, a, yeah, a Mets hater. I mean, why why should I hate on the Mets as a Yankee fan? But I will say this team this year was very unlikable. I mean, I just did not like a lot of the guys on this team for the Mets. I mean, I, between all the all the stupid uh, quotes and Pete Alonzo, Pete Alonzo alone, I went from I liking this Pete. guy to now I can't stand him. He annoys He's the corniest guy, the stupid, oh, don't just believe no. And the Donnie Stevenson crap, and oh my god, I just uh, that guy's just like a cringe See, machine. As a fan, I would die for Pete Alonso. I love the guy. Right, I understand. He's like the heartbeat of the team, but he does a lot of great things off the field. Oh yeah, so. great. I'm not not questioning his character. No, I know. I, know. You know, I can't stand. Him. So. But yeah, I'm just so done. I'm so turned off. I I want everybody to be jobless. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Let's get a new team. Let's win, please God. All right, enough enough baseball because our football teams, man. Let's when go. We come, when we come back, New York football is back. Mm-hmm. We'll be right back. Here we go, episode 38. We are back. Hardline Sports Talk. Let's talk some good old pigskin football. Let's go. Let's start with the Giants here as they beat the Saints 27 to 21 in overtime in New Orleans. I was shocked. I was happy, very happy. You know, both of us, we woke up today feeling good. I mean, you extra good, but. We felt mm-hmm. good waking up today with our football teams getting a win. Let's let's start off with the Giants. So Daniel Jones played unbelievable. Uh, he had 400 yards, two touchdowns. He was he was great. He, he turned the ball over once. It was a hail mary interception. But um, I feel. Ask me how I feel about my quarterback. How do you feel about your quarterback? I feel great. I'm so happy. I got the Giants can go. Two and 15. And if he played well, I'm good. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, I got to give Daniel Jones some credit. I mean, he's had a really good year so far. Um, and obviously, if he continues this, then that's great. And, you know, I don't think the Giants need to start scrambling and trying to pick a quarterback this offseason. But, um, yeah, a great showing. You were a believer that they were going to get blown out. I mean, you were talking about uh, first home game in two years for the Saints. and You know what's funny? Because all week I believed that. All week I was like, there's no way. And then, and then Saturday I'm looking at the game and I'm like, it's Jameis Winston. Like, he, he right. sucks. I'm I don't, like, I, right. I don't think the Saints are capable of blowing them out. And I know they blew out the Packers, but that was just like an anomaly. I, I ended up picking the Giants in, in, in the picks. I, I picked them seven and a half. I was like, yeah. 
Yeah, and then I said to my dad, I, 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 we're sitting there, we watched the first drive, and, and I'm like, we can beat this team. I'm like, they, the Giants can, can beat this team. Like, right. the Saints aren't that good. So they got a good defense. They got a good front, but they got a good offensive line. I mean, they definitely have a good offensive line because the Giants had zero sacks, zero quarterback pressures, and zero hits in the game. So we want to talk about a problem with the Giants. It's their defense. And then I tell you they're going to Dallas next Sunday. So, oh boy, uh, the defense is the problem. Uh, I don't know what the hell Patrick Graham's doing, the defensive coordinator, but he's got some real problems to fix. Uh, they were on the field, you know, a ton in that first half, and they made plays when they had to in the second half. They, they, they stopped them on third down. Bradbury had a nice interception. So, you know, again, they made the plays when it counted, but overall, the defense just played very poorly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's not uh, a part of the team that we expected to to struggle no. was the defense, but they are. Um, I think you saw a lot of the guys on the Giants defense last year had career years, and that always goes into the back of your head. You're like, well, are they going to be able to double that to double down on this next year? And I think the guy who comes to mind when you say that is James Bradbury. 100%. He's been struggling big time this year. Um, w- was one of the, the best corners in the NFL, frankly, last year. And he just hasn't been the same this year. So, yeah, agreed. The defense is a problem. They've have, they've been banged up. You just lost Blake Martinez for the season, which is brutal. Um, so, I think depth is a problem on this defense. I think depth is a problem on the team overall. But right. especially when you look at the, the defense and, and those linebackers, I think that's definitely a big problem for them. But, you know, let's not focus too much on the negative right now. A big win for them on Sunday to salvage the season, basically. You know, 0-4, you're basically buried. You're done. Um, so, do I think this team is going to make a run? No. But, I, you know, I think they can they can take some, some good steps this year. Saquon looked really good. How much does that really matter? I'm not sure because I don't think Saquon fits into this, the picture uh, in the future. But it all starts with number eight. And I think um, if he keeps performing like this, then the stress of the future subsides a little bit. Definitely. Uh, You know, something that was interesting and impressive from the Giants in 2020 was it was a tough season for everybody. But the Giants start out 0-6 and they had these they were a young team and they did have these moments where, you know, if they made this one play, you know, they would have won the game. Kind of like, you know, what we saw in that Washington game. And. They start 0-6 or 0-5, and, and, and they, they get their first win. And it was the way they responded from all these, you know, all this adversity. And, and that was the thing that Judge really sold everybody on, was that no matter what happens, we're always going to pick ourselves up, and we're going to come out, and we're going to play, you know, even harder. We're going to correct the mistakes, and we're going to get better and better and better. And as the season went on, they got better, and they still right. doubled adversity. Now, that moral victory BS is thrown out the window when you make the moves the Giants made in the offseason, when it's the quarterback's third season, and when Judge is in his second year. And, you know, the season obviously got off to a tough start. They lost to a pretty good Denver team. But then the week two, it's like, well, the same mistakes are happening. Right. And then same thing week three, you lose a game that you should have won. Same mistakes happen. My biggest thing with Judge and to see if he was going to keep his job for the rest of the year was how they responded to adversity. Let's see how they pick themselves up. And that was a nice start because he, I, I, I didn't think Judge was having a great game in that first half. So Judge, he shouldn't be coaching to save a season, but he better be coaching to show like, hey, I'm a real NFL coach. Like, I, like I can do right. this thing. So I think that's going to be the biggest thing for Judge and, and Jones playing playing the same way he's been. You know, if he keeps playing like this, like you said, the Giants are going to have the quarterback figured out hopefully and you know you know if you have two high draft picks okay one on the you know another offensive lineman and another defensive player or two defensive players you can just build out your roster it's better right how about Kadarius Tony showing up yesterday that's big 78 I'm yards not, I'm not surprised because the guy is so talented they just had to get him the ball he right. has to get on the field and get the ball right Kenny so it's, Galladay it's, made a couple nice plays Galladay um, was great yesterday Evan Ingram should be working at the local Walmart. I mean, enough's enough. And and the funny part is, I mean, how many chances is this guy going to get? 
Jones loves throwing to the backup tight end, Caden Smith. I mean, they got a great connection. Mm-hmm. And Rudolph, who's, you know, still a little banged up. He had a foot surgery in the offseason. He, they working him in slowly, and he had a couple of catches yesterday. It's like, work these two guys in. Right. Get this guy the hell out. What, but you know, well, I, don't, I don't understand. Like, Dave Gettleman, you didn't even draft this guy. So, right. so what are you covering for? Like, the guy's not – doing it the guy's not performing well then get him out of there there's no you know the, reason you should be co- keep putting him on the field you know what i think you know it could be too these offensive coordinators and these coaches that come in they're like you know it's only been a few of them but uh, two of them but it's like we they see this guy and they're like wow he's like ultra yeah. talented like, give me a shot with him let me see yeah maybe yeah do. exactly maybe it's like an ego thing like oh i can fix this guy i can exactly. fix this guy it's like he's too he's too talented. He's too right. athletic for me not to be able to use him. Right. And then Jason Garrett in the first half when they're at the goal line calls a freaking end around with him. Yeah, what the hell was that? I know. What the hell was that? Listen, first of all, running an end around at the goal line, we saw it. You know, uh, Kellen Moore for the Cowboys actually did it. I was shocked. They ran an end around at the five last Monday night against the Eagles. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? It's a terrible play call. Not only is Garrett running it, but he's running it with one of his least fast, right? His speedy guys. Weapons, right? And, you know, it's it's like, oh well, he's fast for a tight end. Well, he's not even close to the fastest guy in the field. Right? Yeah. Going what, to what run a play that like man? that, you right. run it with Tony. To me, Evan Ingram is kind of—I don't want to call him useless, but he's limit. He's so limited, even if he does does have great hands, because that's the scouting report on him. You're he's undersized for a tight end he's not a great blocking tight end he's quick and um he he'll, he'll he's like a matchup he's a mismatch kind of a thing because of how the, the quickness but the guy can't catch like i said he can't block and he's not that much of a red zone threat in terms of his size and you know uh, uh his catching frame so He's just limited in what he could do. He's he's just not all that good. At this point, and it's crazy to even say this, he's literally he's taking reps away from Caden Smith, who I yeah. believe could be a pretty solid tight end in this yeah. league. It's, I mean, come it's, on. It's like, really how many sad. chances is this guy going to get? I know. And it's crazy because we're talking about a freaking tight end. Yeah. Like a, like a tight end that wasn't even drafted. Like you said, he wasn't even drafted by this guy. Right. I really oh. think... That is such an underrated position when we talk about tight end and and how much of a great help it is to a quarterback, especially yeah. a young quarterback, to have a good tight end. And I think that's where the Jets have have messed up um, with building this team. And there's still time. You know, Zach Wilson's only a rookie, but they the Jets haven't had a, a good tight end in, I mean, years. Chris Herndon sucked. Ryan Griffin's nothing special. Um even before that, I, I can't even remember off the top of my head who, who's came look, before then. But the Jets haven't had that then. great tight end since since freaking uh, Dustin Keller. So look what Belichick did. He went out and he got his quarterback, and they haven't been playing great. But I mean, he got him two safety weapons with John U. Smith and, and Hunter Henry. Then. Yeah. Uh, very quickly on the Giants, uh, John Ross came back, and John Ross, John Ross, who I have just completely ripped on in the past. I thought it was a waste of a draft pick by the Bengals. He looked good. Mm-hmm. He was running routes very well. He had the big play that uh, Jones threw the 50-yard touchdown pass to. Um, I, like you said, Galde was great yesterday. Six catches, 116 yards. He made big-time plays for them. And, you know, listen, there's one thing. Let Jones throw the ball down the field. He's mm-hmm. shown that he's good at it. And, you know, in the two games that Garrett opened up the playbook like that, it should be 2-0 in those games, but he's played incredibly well. So right. let's just keep that going. The Giants will play the Cowboys on Sunday, 425. Joe Buck, Troy Aikman, woohoo. Um, <laughs> listen, Dave, I don't think they're going to win. Am I excited for the game? Sure. What they've done here is if they do somehow pull off an upset in Dallas, they put themselves back into it. So that's why I'm like, you know, getting – I'm excited I'm excited to play the Cowboys. But if they do win this game, they do put themselves right back in it. 
I don't think they'll win. I think they'll lose. I think the Cowboys are legit, legit. And uh, we'll get to them in a little bit, though. Right. But yeah. I was yeah. very happy with yesterday. I mean, the Giants' upcoming schedule is, is definitely hard. Um, so, yeah, this is a win that you're happy that you got. It, it kind of makes up for some lost opportunities earlier in the year. It doesn't fix it. Obviously, you want to win that game against the Falcons. Um, that's a team you should beat. And then that game against Washington was a heartbreaker, as we know. But it's good to to get this win. Those games are behind you. You can only win the games that are, are, are in the future. So it's a good win, you know. There's, there's some good things to take away from it. Daniel Jones keeps playing well, like we said. So um, from this point forward, you just got to go in to every week with that O&O mentality and, and let's end of the day want to know. Yeah, I'm definitely going to go uh, get my Daniel Jones jersey soon. I'll take it easy. Um, a lot of people don't like Joe Judge. He, he had some interesting comments after the game. Yeah. I, 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 I won't play him now. I'll, I'll show you after. But, like, he's like, uh, results in this league, you know, results in anything. Results in life are the most misguided thing you could possibly get. I'm all about the process and the preparation. And how we get there and, you know, looking back at the tape and looking back on everything. It was, I'll send it to you. You'll love it. You know, you'll, you'll get a kick out of it. Oh, boy. Joe Judge, interesting guy. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's kick it over to your New York Jets here after they get a big time win, big time upset over the Tennessee Titans, 27 to 24 in overtime, Zach Wilson, who he didn't start this game off pretty good. He ended up having a massive second half making Mm -hmm. a couple of incredible throws that we're still talking about today. And the Jets get their first win of the year. Rob Sala, first win of his career. And Zach Wilson, first win of his career. The Jets and the Jeff fans, really the franchise. And, uh, you know, I meant to say that about the Giants too. The franchise needed that win. The Jets needed a game like this. Yes, the Jets did. Um, Zach Wilson did. I think this helps his confidence. Played very well. Got a floor. Well, uh, yes, Zach, Mike LaFleur, yes. Um, they got off to a, a rough start again this week, and the offense just did not look great, and you were just thinking, here we go again. But um, Zach Wilson came up big, uh, had a couple just incredible throws, um, those mahomes s throws that, you know, we kept hearing about in uh, – the scouting process and we saw it as pro day and stuff like that. They, for the first time yesterday, they were put on display through two strikes, like 60 yards down the field, basically. Um, and I would like to go, you know, into, into detail and, and praise Zach Wilson and praise the offense and everything like that. But I think the story of this game is the defense, honestly. Um, 100%. You know, I think obviously with Julio Jones and AJ Brown being out, the, the Titans were at a disadvantage, but, um, it wasn't the secondary that won the Jets the game anyways, and, and them having to guard, you know, the backup Titans wide receivers, it was the pass rush. I mean, Quinn and Williams with two sacks, Bryce Huff, who's been a great addition for this Jets team and is getting better by the week, um, you know, filling that edge rusher hole that we had and we thought we filled with Carl Lawson, but obviously the season ending injury before the season even started. Um, and Quincy Williams, Quinn Williams' brother had a great game and Robert Sala and, and Jeff Ulbrich did a great job with the defense, um, with that kind of disguised pass coverage and, and, and pass rush and stunts and everything like that. Um, and, and this defense is just really exciting to watch because I think the jets, they've had that pass rush problem for years. And I think we're seeing this year that it's so it's it's starting to get solved. And I think the way it's getting solved is yes, you need to put talent on the field, but I think they're finally getting the most out of the talent that they can possibly get. Seven sacks. Mm-hmm. That's incredible. Mm-hmm. The defense has been good all season too. Yeah, I mean. They talk about the worst possible positions an offense can put their defense in. The Jets have done that this year. Right. So whether it's four picks in one game, whether it's not being able to move the ball, whether it's the defense being on the field for 75% of the game, the Jets defense has played, considering the circumstances, very, very well. Right. And for a team that's one and three and, and, you know, failed to cover a spread the first three weeks of the season, 
they haven't given up more uh, 30 or more points. That's incredible. So that actually is pretty, yeah, pretty uh, incredible. Rob Sala and Jeff Albrecht definitely deserve some credit for this defense. And, you know, I was, I was just thinking about it just now. It's like the Giants have been abysmal on offense. The Jets have been abysmal on offense for years now. For years, it's been just an absolute freaking joke where to the point where I was even thinking about this before the games on Sunday. I'm like, why do I look forward to football when I know my team is not going to be able to do the things offensively that literally 30 other teams can do? Right. And the Giants and the Jets both had great days offensively. Their quarterbacks showed you like, wow. And especially with the Jets, the Jets have never had a quarterback like this where you literally sit there and you go, Oh my God. Right. Yeah. Sam Donald does not make those, those two throws that Zach Wilson did last yesterday. No. I mean, those are incredible. Um, and you know, there was a play where Zach Wilson, uh, it was towards the end of the game and Zach Wilson fumbled the snap. There were, there was a mishap with the exchange and he picked it up and basically off his back foot had that Rogers esque release where he just flicked it. And got it 30 yards downfield into James uh to Jameson Crowder inside. That was on the sideline, right? Yeah, and set up a first and goal. In overtime. Um, no, that was in the fourth quarter. You're thinking about the Jameson Crowder ran like a little out route or whatever in overtime that got them down to like the eight yard line. Where he literally just floated up right on the almost like the opposite side of the field on the sideline. No, see, yes, that is the play I'm talking about, but that was in the fourth quarter. There's another okay. Jameson Crowder play in overtime. Where he just ran like an out route, got like about 15 yards or whatever. There were like four throws in that game yesterday. I was like, that that was an yeah. impressive freaking mm-hmm. throw from him. So, yes, very impressive day for Zach. Michael LaFleur had a good day. I really liked some of the play calling. Um, that that play at the end where they were at the one yard line and there was that bootleg. Um, I have to go back and watch that again. I haven't gotten been able to look on my uh, NFL game pass yet, but from what I could tell, that was you know a bootleg and a, a pass, not a design run. And it looked like one of the tight ends just got caught up at, at the line of scrimmage and didn't even make it out. He fell down or whatever. And then the other one was just locked up by the corner and Zach Wilson had nothing to do. I would like to see him throw it away in that situation. But um, I don't know if there was a legal man downfield scenario or whatnot. So like right. I said, I, I can't get it too hard on him there. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was the first time. I, 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 I forgot what it feels like to have your football team win and I know the Jets won two games last year, but they, they didn't win a game until they had already lost 11 of them. So mm. that is the first time I have felt the feeling of winning and not being like, oh, but we need to get Trevor Lawrence or we need to do the, you know, just being happy with a win since 2019. And your quarterback playing like that and showing you like, holy crap, like, yes. this might be the real deal. Right. You definitely, uh, we finally saw the flashes yesterday of what this guy can be. And you, you know how impatient we are as fans. It, it's crazy right. because, you know, it's, it's the fourth week. And yes, it doesn't help that Sam Darnold, you know, was lighting the world on fire in Carolina, but that shouldn't matter. Right. Because you can't, you can't run your teams like that. You can't say, oh, well, you know, this could happen. This guy could be great. It really it, is ridiculous. We should, you know, I've been a, a big criticizer of Daniel Jones and the guys in his third year, and he could end up still, you know, we've seen he's been playing well this year, but he could still end up being the Giants franchise quarterback and being a pro bowler and win a Super Bowl. And he can also still be a bust, be horrible. Like, you got to wait, wait, wait. We yeah. want to talk about Lamar Jackson. I was – after seeing Lamar Jackson in his rookie year, that wild card game against the Chargers where he played awful, I was like, this guy's just not made for the NFL. He, he's obviously um, – his college game isn't going to translate well in the NFL. Wins an MVP, <sighs> is obviously a great player. Josh Allen, first rookie year, did not look good at all. Ends up having – now he's an MVP candidate, you know, every year. Um, even Jared freaking Goff and Carson Wentz, the up and downs of those guys. Like you just don't know. It takes years to finally not Derek Carr. Derek Carr has been in the league for six years. We still don't know if Derek Carr is is the Raiders franchise quarterback or not. 
Okay, no. That's not true. Derek Carr is the franchise Derek Carr is a franchise quarterback. Gruden and just idiots that don't believe in him are the ones that are wrong. But you okay, guys but it's not enough. it's not known then. If they don't believe in him, then it's it's still not known. Well, again, there it is. The, listen, I think it's been pretty clear that, that Carr is a franchise quarterback. I, 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 I don't like so the Raiders. Too. I don't think the Raiders are that good. I think they're overrated. I, I thought they would get pummeled tonight. I mean, they're losing 21 nothing, but they, they might go in and tie it right here. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I thought they would get pummeled tonight. I was wrong. Wrong with a lot this week. Wrong. My picks wrong were with, god awful. It's impossible. It is, it's just so – picking these spreads is just like I, – I, my brain can't do it anymore. And I actually had a decent week. I think I'm like eight and six so far, but – I just can't, I can't do it. Like, what, if what? the Chargers cover tonight, I'll go. Five How am I supposed to know if the freaking Houston Texans are going to cover 17 and a half? Well, they didn't. I they had know that. they, they didn't. definitely didn't. It's garbage. I mean, hey, how about how do you feel about uh, New York Jets in London next week? You um, wake up, I, maybe, maybe eat a maybe eat a waffle while you're yeah, watching the Jets. Yeah, top we'll of the morning, yes. Yeah, top of the morning to you. Um, that's gonna I'm be excited, yeah. That's gonna be a good time. Um, I, uh, you know, I said it this morning. The the Jets' schedule now is is really not that hard. So this team could end up winning f- uh, five, six games this year, and, and having a respectable season because they're playing the Falcons. And I don't want to go crazy here, but. Uh, do I think the Jets are going to be favored in this game? No. Do I think this is going to be a big line? No. I think it'll be – I would be surprised if it's anything more than five points. What? Falcons-Jets, the spread for that game on a neutral site. I think that should be within five points. I think it'll go three to the three, three to, to the, the Falcons. Falcons. Yeah. I mean, the Falcons the, – the Jets should put up points again this week. You know, they have confidence now in the Falcons' defense – is not good at all. Bad. Yeah. So hold on. Let me just pull up the jet schedule really quick. I know they go a buy after. So they the... go. Yeah. So they London. go Falcons, then they go buy. So there's a chance. Obviously, they go two and three into the buy week. We're not talking playoffs here. So if, if anyone's listening to this and thinking I'm going to say the Jets are going to go ten and seven, um, Patriots on the road. Hmm. Bengals at home. We don't know what the Bengals are yet. I still don't yeah, freaking know what the Bengals are yet. We'll see. At the Colts. I don't even know what the Colts are still. Home against the Bills. Yeah. Not great. Now, here's where they hit a nice little stretch. Home against the Dolphins. Sure. Dolphins don't look great. At the Texans. Sure. Home against Philly. Philly's a dumpster fire. Home against New Orleans. That's a winnable game. At Miami, and then home against um, the Jags. So yeah. I think you know this team. What's that last game? Uh, then it's bucking there. It's home against the Bucks, and then at the Bills. Oh God, please! You know no. it's so weird seeing this with the eighteen-week season that they're playing a regular season game on January 9th. That's cool. They play the game after Christmas, and they play the game after New Year's, but um. Yeah, I think that they, they can win that Jaguars game. They can uh, win the Eagles game, win the Texans game, win the Bengals game, win the Falcons game. So, yeah, I think this team could end up as a 5-12, and 6-11 and 11 club. They could still end up 2-15, and 15, but um, I really don't want that. I'm 100% on board for – if you said to me, JM, Zach Wilson could have identical stats and they go 2-15 and 15, or they go – Six and 11. Give me that six and 11, a hundred percent. I don't care anymore about what draft pick we have. We got our quarterback. Um, you know, it's not guaranteed that this guy's a franchise quarterback, but you're not going to pick a quarterback this year. But, right. um, we, we have, we think we have our quarterback and we have plenty of draft capital this year. Give me that feel good six and 11. The team's doing good. Rather than the two and fifteen dumpster fire and oh let's get Kayvon Thibodeau like I don't need that I'm done I don't need the best draft pick we can get I'm tired of going on Tankathon and looking at mock drafts in October oh. I'm done I want to see my team be competitive win a couple ball games 
we're not talking playoffs yet, but I want to see my team be relevant. Yeah, no, I feel you. Kayvon Thibodeau would be nice, but uh, yeah, mm. you're right about that. Yeah. All right. Little uh, quick recap, recap from the weekend. I mean, you had the Brady yeah. Bucks thing, which you know you were so excited, and a lot of people were really excited. Oh, about it was it. great. And Loved I was excited, but I mean, the whole thing like. This is the most highly anticipated regular season game in 10 years. Or Come on. Great. I Can loved it. Can we stop? I loved Tom, every minute about Tom it. Tom Brady goes back to, to Foxborough. Yes, obviously that's a storyline. Tom Brady and the Buccaneers take on Mac Jones and the Patriots. That's what you're like. Oh, I'm so highly anticipating this. This is Did more you see those videos? than Rams Chiefs from four years ago or all these great matchups we've had. Did you see those videos Brady was putting out on his socials? Goosebumps. Yes. I mean, goosebumps. I listen. Game ended up being good. The I, let me tell you about Vegas yesterday. Oh boy, did Vegas Down make bed. out big? Vegas killed every everybody yesterday. Yeah. Like, what did you end up picking? Did you end up picking the box I, or the pass? I literally. When we did our picks on TikTok, I had Patriots plus seven written on my sheet. And then as I was getting the game, I was like, you know, I really want to go against the grain here and pick the Patriots. But I remember you telling me earlier in the season for that Ravens Chiefs game, you were like, oh, Vegas is really on the Ravens for this game. Like, and I was like, oh, no way. The Chiefs are going to cover you. Like, no, Vegas, like everybody, the big betters are picking the Ravens. So I was like, you know, I'm going to trust Vegas. Let me just say Tampa Bay minus seven. And next time I got to go with my gut. Listen, and you know, yeah, you had that mixed up because the big betters were on the pads last night. Wow, really? So the public, like 95% of the public, you know, like BS betters right. were on the Bucks because, you know, it's the Bucks and it's Brady. But the big guys, you know. 100K, 50K, they were on the pads last night. Jeez. They usually go with Vegas. And Vegas right. it was a bloodbath last night. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I I loved that. I thought it was great. I like I enjoy games like that, messy, you know, rainy, you know, low-scoring games. I, I thought Brady um was very amped up, and he, he showed it. I mean, it's a couple of throws. throws he airmailed by 10 yards. So I thought the game was uh, interesting. I thought Mac Jones – Played well. I really do. Um, Chris Collinsworth is obsessed with him, but he was showing the the release time and he gets the ball out quickly. And, you know, it's like that dink and dunk offense. It's, you know, 10 yards here, maybe some 15 yards here. Right. It was good. It worked. And I, they should have won the game. I thought they should have won the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bill Belichick not going for it. And midfield there, fourth and three, instead of kicking up. Yeah, what the hell field was goal. that? I don't understand what the hell that was in the rain, 56 yards. Nick Folk was having some injury issues and, yeah. you're, and you're kicking a field goal and it was close. Right. It was Come on. You're giving the ball back to Brady with, with 55 seconds to go. Brady's going to go down the field and kick a field goal to win the game. I'll take whatever Steve Belichick's having. Oh boy. Yeah. You see this guy? What is he like? Coked out on the sideline. He looks like David Wright. When David Wright would go make a barehanded play. Like, Yeah. I mean, listen. I don't want to. I don't want to jump down the guy's throat. I don't know if there's something wrong with them, but you know what? What? Yeah, what am so I watching? This like it's creeping me out. Why is his tongue go. always out of his mouth? Chargers are driving in the red zone right here. Six minutes to yeah. go, up seven. Do you ever see his interviews? He talks just like Bill. He's like, uh, like Mom does he Tom's really? Like, yeah. He has like was, when I'm seeing those videos last night, I'm thinking, what is the conversation like? between bill and right. steve like you think he calls him up and he goes hey dad right. and then like, what do you think bill says back like oh, well, yeah. hey, hey steve son. what's up bud yeah hey like, what, buddy what's good like champ? what do you th- no? like what do you think he calls him i don't know like probably steve like, he probably calls him steve like, hey steve yeah hey steve. yeah steve yep. yeah like just no emotion yeah no they call it like yeah dad did you watch the film yet for this week and then he's like he starts like <laughs> just starts making weird faces and licking his lips and <laughs> bill's probably weird. like what are you doing like, yeah. stop oh also how stupid was that they show the picture and it's brady and belichick embracing each other oh, that was great. Oh, what a sweet moment and then you look at the video and bill's like 
Yeah, how you doing, Tom? And he just like darts out of there. He literally. Did you see what happened? No. After the game. Well, oh, that he apparently went to the locker room or something. They spoke for like a twenty minutes, half hour. People yeah. were saying Brady and Belichick. So, I think you know my opinion on this. And I didn't read that book from Sean uh, Wickerspoon yet, but I or whatever you say his name, Wickersham. I have to read it though; it's not out yet. But it's always it's documented that they hate each other. I don't think they hate each other. Do I think Brady was incredibly frustrated by the end of that? You know, tenure, a hundred percent. Yeah, but. I'm going to say, no, they don't hate each other. No, I mean, I there's no so. way. Do you remember when Brady went on the shop and he said, um, he basically, he said, you know, I went to this team and, you know, they said, no, we're good. We're going to stick with our guy. And he goes, you're sticking with that mother effer. Yeah. Talking about the Niners. He was talking about how crazy that that, that story came out. Apparently, Brady called Wes Welker, who was a wide receivers coach over there in San Francisco, right after they lost the Super Bowl to the Chiefs. And he called Wes and he said, let everybody know I will come here two years, $50 million, no free agency, nothing, no, no you know, bidding wars. I'll come. That's it. We're good. Right. And the Niners found out and John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan went out, went over everything. And they were like, no, you know, the. The difference between Jimmy G and Tom Brady running the offense was not that big enough to, to make a move like that. And oh, well, Brady wins the Super Bowl and the 49ers yeah. drafted another quarterback. So pretty crazy. Wow, how, how things would have shaped up, you know? And and it's what we if? we speculated for how long about who that, that team was when that came out with Brady. And it's so funny how that, you know, ended up being it's just it's Boy, crazy nice. the way things work. You know, if, if Brady goes, let's say Brady goes to San Francisco, then, you know, maybe Nick Bosa doesn't tear his ACL last year because maybe the Patriot, uh, you know, Tom Brady, instead of the, the, the Niners punting and the Jets getting the ball at that specific spot on the field, maybe the Patriot, uh, I keep saying the Patriots, maybe the Niners <laughs> score and Nick Bosa's not in that certain spot and the Jets don't run that play and he doesn't make this certain cut and tears. Like, it's just crazy. And the, the different factors that go into everything. Um, if the 49ers about, would have won the Super Bowl. If one small decision was was made, so you never know. You you never you never know. Mm-hmm. It is something else. Uh, what else we got here? Chiefs defense is pretty terrible, man. Yeah, uh, they're 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 in some trouble. AFC is absolutely wide open. I mean, AFC other than the fact the other than the fact that the Bills may be outscoring teams the whole season by 80 points. Um, just ignore that. And how but, bizarre uh, yeah. is it that Stephon Diggs isn't having like a crazy season yet? Yeah, it is. Did you trade him away in fantasy? I did. Nice. Yeah. Look at you. Look at you making moves. There. Yeah, for Joe, uh, Joe Mixon was involved in that trade, and he's hurt now. So that's that's the third injury that I've gotten for my running backs. Oh. Yeah, it's all right. Oh, uh, the Chiefs definitely got issues there. Uh, I'm going to proclaim this right now. You ready? The Chargers yeah. are a legit Super Bowl contender, like top two in my eyes in the AFC right now. Bills wow. Chargers. Holy crap. Those are, my, two. those are my two teams right now in the AFC. I'd, I'd have the Browns over them, but uh, it's fair enough. Um, yeah, I think uh, – I think the uh, Chargers definitely have the much better quarterback, and it's not even close. Yeah, Baker uh, I mean, sucks. Can we? Can we? Baker, yeah, Baker's Baker does kind of suck. Yeah. Um. All right, you want to you want to get a little crazy here? Then sure, I'll I'll, I'll say the uh, the Cowboys are a legit Super Bowl contender. I happen to agree with you. I mean, this all Dak is just continues to amaze every week. It looks like at some points he could score whenever he wants with this passing game. Uh, Zeke is looking good. Scored again. Rushed for 140 yards this week. And Listen, the- I know you're a Zeke fantasy owner. I, I I wouldn't be worried about Zeke. The fact that people are talking about this as a problem, that they have two running backs that are very, very good. Like, oh, this no. Only yeah. helps their chances. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the defense. It. It. The defense. Has been has, has been terrible. Has been it's been above average. Trayvon they, Diggs has been fantastic. The thing about this team is that they're very opportunistic. They 
they turn the ball over. So if they are getting turnovers, then they're going to have a good game. If they're not turning the ball over, then you you can – I mean, you could do whatever you want to that defense, really, but – no, They're but they haven't been turnovers. they haven't been like that. Even with yes, they have been getting turnovers, but they haven't been that bad where it's you can do whatever you want. They've been I mean, uh the Panthers are running all over them yesterday. Until Darnold started turning but the, the passing, ball over was the, when they their gained. pass defense has been good. Yes, but again, DJ Moore was wide. I I feel good about my chances going there and, and being able to do what I want, but again, you just can't turn the ball over. Right. True. But uh, how about this for a hot take? I'm going to agree with you. I I think they're in the top three Super Bowl chances right now in the NFC. I'd say the Bucs and the Rams are over them. Okay. Is that hot? Bucs, Rams. Yeah. What about about the Cardinals? You know, and I love, you know, how much I love the Rams and they go and dominate them. The Cardinals going to dominate them. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, what do I have to like? What am I going to say? What, what what else do I have to see? They just beat the best team that people don't in the NFL, right? And killed them. I'm not there yet. The offensive line still shaky. The penalties are slightly. They're still on discipline a little bit. So let's let's let me see it more. Right. Yeah, it's interesting though. It's crazy. They've mm-hmm. been really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. What else we got here? Uh, I think that's it. Trey Lance um, might be starting a couple of games there. Good to see my boy Trey get the shot. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, rest. I uh, got to rest up. Big, big day tomorrow. What are we? Um, uh. What's up? What's on the menu there tomorrow? I don't know. I think I, I think we're just gonna like order something. I don't think you want wings. You want wings and later? Yeah, wings. Whatever. I don't know. I'll let you know. I got a hustle. I got class. Till like five o'clock, and then we got rush hour traffic. That's gonna be a pain in the ass. But the game starts at eight. You're good. Oh, it's eight. It's not seven. Yeah, it's eight. Oh, it's eight. Okay. Yeah. yeah no good. rush. Drive. Drive safe. Yeah. Oh, of course. Listen. Good luck to your Yankees. It'll be Thank a fun you. day. Yep. And uh, listen, postseason baseball's here. It's the best time. Post- this is the absolute best time of the best year. Best time. So. I could not agree more. We'll talk to you guys later in the week. Enjoy the games.